What's up folks, it's Jang here from ultimaterc.com and ultimatetamiya.com and this is jumping right into the build of the Tamiya TA-06 Pro chassis kit that I've been basically sitting on for just entirely too long. I've had the kit ready to build and uh, other things have just kept coming up that were higher priority but here we go, finally getting into it. This is a standard 190 millimeter four-wheel drive uh, sedan. And as of the time of this video, I think it's the, the most up-to-date uh, sedan design that they have for club level racing. They of course have the, the 400 series uh, serious racing machines, but those cost a ton more. This is what many would call a belt drive vehicle. You know, usually sedans, four-wheel drive sedans, are split into two categories, belt drive and shaft driven. But in reality, it's, it's half, half belt driven and half, half uh, you can call it direct drive or call it gearbox drive. The rear is actually going to be uh, using a transmission and the gear drive is gonna go directly to the rear the rear wheels, whereas the belt is used to transfer power only to the front differential. So what I am building right here, right from the beginning, is going to be the rear differential that's going to go into that rear transmission. It's going to be a three gear transmission, uh, pretty much like you usually see on an off-road vehicle, on a two-wheel drive off-road vehicle. So a little bit of a departure from the current norm, but uh, Tamiya has done gearbox driven uh, sedans quite a bit in its past. Uh, let's see what we have here. I've got two of these. I'm going to need to get a couple more of these. These are the, the gears, the internal gears for the diff. And they are plastic and hard little, uh, I think these are carbon reinforced from the feeling of it. Uh, very rigid and you have to cut them off the sprue and then also trim off some extra uh, mold marks, some extra flashing. It's actually molded into these things, so it's very important to get those as flush as possible early on, otherwise they will tend to bind up on you. All right, skipping forward a little bit with these guys all trimmed up. Here comes an output shaft. Here comes the main differential case itself, and then this is gonna get an o-ring, a large o-ring over it, because this is actually going to be a sealed uh, silicone filled gear diff, which is again a, a little bit of a departure from the norm. Pretty cool. And this gets a couple of shims inside of it. And then there's a pin that goes in, which I'm going to have to use a tool to get in from the side because not a lot of room to work in there. Get this guy pushed down a little bit. Here's a little pro tip for you. It helps if you use the right pin. And I'll show you exactly what I mean by that. Because at this step, you've got one bag open, which has many bags inside of it. <laughs> and they give you three different pins of three different sizes and calibers. And they are each used in different situations. So. Of those, you want to use the ones that came with all of the shims. So there, that there's a couple of them right there. So this is the guy to use. It's smaller in diameter. There, that goes. And what I did here is I actually just lined up the pin with one of these uh, wider sections that has enough room for this guy to fit down into and it just gave enough room to, to slide the pin in. Now with that side assembled, I'm gonna put that aside for a second and get the other side ready. It's gonna be a similar thing again with O-ring followed by two 0.1 millimeter shims. There you can see it more clearly, one, two. And then another one of those smaller, thinner pins there we go, and that's how that works out. Now I'm going to put the bevel gears on. The ones that go on the sides. And 
you need to make sure that these engage the pin on each side properly. You need the pin to be centered for that to happen. It'll actually just slip down all the way and it'll be flush with the shim underneath. It'll also be fairly flush across the top right here. And then the little spiders go on to this carrier. It's the first time I've seen one of these assemblies done completely in composite, but I will trust that they did their homework and due diligence and engineering and that this will hold up. There's that. Sits down into there. And then comes the silicone grease or silicone oil. And the package they give you actually says uh, damper oil because it's the same stuff. And I'm going to get this largely full, not all the way full. You need to leave enough room for the gear on the opposite side to fit in. And I don't want this to get all super messy as I assemble it. I don't want it to squeeze oil out. So that looks pretty good. And we'll give it a little, little rotation. And between the cuts, I accidentally put these two together or absentmindedly put these two together without putting in this fiber washer first. Be sure to put that in first. It's actually a, a seal that's going to keep uh, any oil from leaking out. And then these two, oops, come on, get in there, get in your slot. There we go. Then these two will go together like so. And then these tiny, tiny little screws will hold the whole thing together. Key thing when assembling uh, diffs together, sealed diffs especially that have a gasket in there, is to know that the, the gasket is going to be a little bit flexible. It will, you'll actually be able to crush it a little bit. So because of that, if you tighten down your screws more firmly on one side than on another, then you can actually end up with the entire assembly kind of lopsided and it will create a little bit of grinding in there. So just be sure, whatever you do, to use the same amount of pressure on all of these screws all the way around. Be sure to do it by hand. Oh, that feels nice. Feels very nice. I mean, it feels like a gear diff, but it's consistent all the way around and you can just feel that silicone fluid in there. Actually, some uh, silicone fluid did spill out and uh, I don't want to use, uh, I don't want to mix this type of of oil with whatever lube is going to be used inside the transmission itself. So I'm going to go ahead and wash this off with a little bit of electric motor cleaner and then come back. Okay, that is now clean. My fingers are a little bit defatted, but it's all good. I'm going to put that aside for the moment and dig out some transmission halves. 